everybody. Happy to see all of you here at our fourth Peter Pie conference. And it so happens that we are starting with my presentation. It will deal with Docker and life coding, and I hope you will all of you like it. Unfortunately, our time is limited. That's why I won't be able to show you too much. But you will find more information on the web. Today we'll be speaking about testing of infrastructures based on Docker. Certainly. I wonder who of those present here in this room now is using Docker-based infrastructure for development. I thought everybody would raise their hands, because in today's world uh, it seems there is nothing more convenient. Uh, which of you have deployed it for production? A bit fewer people, but at least it's quite encouraging to see that the number of such people is growing, because last year, when I was telling you about uh, Docker-based infrastructure, there were only very few people. First of all, about myself. I am Ilya Beda. I've been dealing with software development for more than nine years now, uh, making presentations at conferences and conducting master classes. Hopefully, you will like what I have prepared for you today. And just a few more words by way of introduction. Why do you think uh, infrastructure tests are needed? Uh, I understand uh, that uh, the audience is structured in such a way that won't be able to have a dialogue. At so that's why I will be asking questions and will answer them myself. myself. Uh, compared to just common unit tests, uh, a Docker-based tests uh, deal with the questions uh, impossible to answer, because when we use unit tests, we need to make sure that the code is valid, but quite often we have to replace it with certain elements which are beyond our control as uh, developers. I don't think any of you have prepared a test to make sure that uh, the MOC was really sent. Most probably you used the message adjustment to make sure that the function was activated with a particular argument, even though it doesn't mean that email uh, sending works in your um, application, because it may be, it may happen that your login is wrong or your passwords are wrong or instead of sending information uh, they will be recording the base and in general case uh, we should not uh, they should not uh, check if all the applications work correctly but it's impossible for us to make sure that everything works in their totality. That's why we have uh, structured testing to make sure that all of the bricks uh, put fit together and our application is working, is performing uh, correctly. Today, as an example, we will use an application which is a load balancer, which I would developed around two years ago. And today, it, it, such kind of uh, balancers do not make too much sense. Uh, there are other tools. However, if you deal with consulting and with similar applications, then basically these balancers are available. Let's look at its structure now. It works as follows. We have a certain set of virtual elements and a container. The idea beyond, behind the balancer is to put it in. There is a great uh, project by Gliderax with their uh, registrator. So when a container is launched, it records information into a particular uh, warehouse or storage facility. In my case, it is ACD. So accordingly, once we start a container, the registrator learns about it 
and thus we accumulate information on all of the containers available and then it's really needed to ensure traffic and we have a uh, decode uh, based on Go and if in ETCD a new clue is incorporated then it is restarted in our case we will have the configures and then we as soon as we restart it access will be granted let's look at how it works and then we'll write down the test to make sure that it can be checked both manually and also virtually let's start with our composer here's etcd which uh, supplies code uh, 4001 uh, make you may see that it has access it should have access to docker and uh, the last container actually it is the balance itself has decode inside the container are two servers it is one case when uh, we put several services into one container unfortunately we have no other choice that's the way we will proceed i won't describe the details of um, of it you will find it e openly available now let's uh, start let's launch our application and now if we look at the local host we see that it is not working now it needs to be duly initiated so sooner or later you will get a message from Nginx and we also have a whole world a local domain that I use and in the same way we introduce the message now we will restart is our docker compose uh, in uh, background uh, mode and let's see how the registrator works as i have already said with r2 4001 we have a container representing the state of our distributed warehouse and uh, here is the service branch and here is a list of all the docker containers uh, as supplied by etcd and now if we start the if we run the application the application which is a hollow word on a memory stick if we look at uh, port 5000 after we run this container there is information in etcd that it exists and based on it we can learn that it has an IP address and a port and the IP address is inside the virtual uh, network uh, which exists in the docker let's uh, run uh, several of such containers let them be three and we can see here accordingly three lines uh, in the dark uh, list of this type now we need to connect the virtual host with this group of containers for this purpose we use uh, the clue uh, branch host it's not a standard this is the way i implemented it and uh, now we can we should say that uh, the domain uh, the, what corresponds to the domain name is this container so this is the information which nginx is to understand which we get from adcd 
after we run uh, several commands to create a directory describing our service, then we put down the server name to connect them, and uh, finally we say that we need to run it uh, after we establish the value. Here we can see hello world and there is information on it inside. Then when we get to hello world local we have our application and we can see that this identifier uh, keeps changing all along and the mode distributes the queries on it while the local host still has the engine X, uh, engine uh, invitation, if we had other containers, we could also run them to make sure that all of them w work properly. And now we move to the next part of our uh, presentation when we prepare a test, and everything will be done automatically. Now we install our containers to see how we can create an infrastructure for all of this. Now I prepare a Docker Compose file, then I add a new service test, then I specify the uh, directory, and then I put in the Docker sock to prepare the container, which means that the application which is run in the Docker will control the container. Now let us look at the Docker file. As a matter of fact, a more common Docker file for this application. You may actually pick up more information from my presentation last year about the development of this file. Here we add the dependencies then we put in the code, the dependencies. We have a long list of dependencies and a library to handle the Docker and quests for making queries across the network. And here we have a useful run test script which is responsible for running our infrastructure first. And then we run our tests and add the necessary arguments. Now let us look at what we have here. We have test nginx, uh, nginx uh, and assert false where nothing is happening. First of all, we need to make sure that our nginx is available. Since we have set falls, uh, we will get inside our uh, environment and we'll be able to test something here. And then we can send a request. If, but if we do it like this, it won't work because the local host is in fact our container where tests are run. And in fact, it's quite an evident thing. However, it is not always that we uh, understand it. That's why sometimes really childish mistakes are made here. That's why we have our conf d, and uh, here the Docker Compose file is called uh, called d. Uh, that's why the Docker automatically does it. If we send a request there. Then we get a correct answer with code 200 and within the content of our page and somewhere there is nginx. Now let us prepare a test then. Conf D and Let's have two asserts. The first one would be RESP status code 200, and the second one will be will read as engine X is in uh, res, RESP content, and we need uh, to call uh, function decode. 
now let's run our test. And uh, if I haven't made any mistake, uh, it should uh, work. Yes, everything is working okay, but there are always certain subtleties. If now we open the container, and when we uh, mm, uh, run our tests on CI, it's quite normal when the container starts from scratch. And here, we simply run our script, and unfortunately, we will see that our test stops working uh, with some error. It cannot get connected to port 80. Now we need to get to the top of the list, to our code. And the most interesting part of it is that if we repeat uh, the request, uh, everything will be working, because our test start before the container has been warmed up and uh, start started working. As a matter of fact, uh, Docker Compose, starting from version 3, has a special mechanism of checking. But there is an old method which is more universal. We have a very cool container such as Docker Rise. Docker Rise, uh, which is, in, it is not just a simple container. In fact, uh, it is an application intended for simplifying your container. It has templating of file in a variable environment and what we need is a command waiting for the port to open. And accordingly we say that Dockerize needs to apply TCP protocol under the code D name, and after it gets a response, it should uh, keep running. Here we put it into our balance uh, network, and now we will add a file uh, launched by our tests, and adding here wait for. And now we stop all of it, then we fully implement our application, and we have cleaned it all. Now we have a network, we have our containers uh, starting, now they are running, but not ready yet. Uh, wait for is starts working and it gets connected to port 80. It cannot get connected to it. It waits for five seconds. Now it is okay. And now the container for testing is uh, switching on. The test is okay. So we have prepared a test to check the performance of Engine X. This is quite all right, but we need to do something more serious. Let us now make sure that our balancer knows how to distribute uh, requests between different posts. It will be a more interesting test, and hopefully I will be able to uh, perform it without any errors or foolish things happening. It will look like this. The first query for confd under name confd. Now we need to get it to get it back to the reply with nginx, and the second one will have to contain Flask. Here's hello world dot local. Now. We need to somehow run this service. Uh, it is very convenient to run containers required for the test using certain features such as Hello World service. And now, 
let us create it. And here's a PyTest fixture. And we can say straight away, we can put down scope, which means that there will be a container for each function. And after it, it uh, will have been used, it will be deleted. And now we, we need to have a client. It is another fixture that we're going to create now. The scope of this fixture is a module. And Docker client, which means that it doesn't depend on anything. So we need to use the Docker library, which was previously called Docker Py, which will help us to create containers. Now, in 2017, everything is okay because we have from Barons, which simply reads uh, your environment. And then you uh, deal with it f using your terminal. In the past, although it needed to be detailed, nowadays it's much easier. Now you can create our container. So in Docker Client, we have an object uh, containers, which has commands uh, for running containers. So we're going to run container, the container that we previously started manually. And now we say that detach. We need to let it go, to let it uh, keep working. And now in the network, we need to put it into the network. So that it works together with our balancer. Our network's name is as follows. Balancer, balancer. Uh, the first part of it is the directory, and the second one is the name of the network proper. So these are the rules used by the Docker composer. Uh, now we can get the container as a result of the fixture work, and after that we kill the container remove it and this pattern for dealing with containers is quite convenient for testing because it helps to prepare it uh, the way you need it then you use it for your function in our case all we need is just its availability and existence and after that we use formalize and kill it or remove it and in fact, uh, this fixture is incomplete now because we have created a container, but the domain name of Hello World has not been linked to it. That's why here we have a second dependency, which is etcd client, which we'll put down now. Now for scope, we have the same module. Client, etcd client. The host is etcd, and the port is 4001. And where exactly? Ah, there is an error there. Yes. Thanks a lot for having corrected me. If I make another slip of the pen, please uh, don't feel too shy to correct me. Otherwise, we would have a bug uh, to deal with for a long time, because we need to have a live story and not just a debugging situation. And now here's our container. Our etcd client now can write what we need. First of all, we need this clue, this key. Here we put down, and the next uh, key we need is the fact that we switch on our service. We enable our service.
I thought the formatting here would be better, but in fact it is worse. Anyway, after our container has uh, been used, we need to remove all the unnecessary information from ETCD so that it doesn't affect our test. Now we use delete. Uh, we show which key needs to be deleted. Here we are. So basically, everything is ready now. Let's uh, try to run it. Who thinks everything will work fine? Raise your hands. Certainly not. Certainly, we have some error conditions, and I have already made a lot of errors. And it happened when I tried to run ICI server because I was using as a uh, service which is free of charge and very slow. And it's a very good way to make sure to which extent your integration test is uh, reliable because uh, when everything is fast enough, it may really run smoothly, but sometimes it doesn't work. That's why you may use this live hack try to use a smaller machine and you might find more interesting things then and just like uh, last time we'll send a request we don't even assign any name to it request get HTTP hello world uh, dot local and then we immediately get uh, the content back. The problem is that when we created a container and put down the keys in etcd, it only means that they were introduced there. But then, after a while, even if you have a full-fledged watching, it would take some time, because it takes some time to read the keys, then uh, uh, write them into the file, etc. If we, when we were doing it manually, it seemed quite fast. But when we apply the automatic mode, it really runs instantaneously. In the simplest way, we could use slips, but it would first of all take some time, and we would also depend on the environment. It may run on one thing and not run on another thing. That's why we need more information and more context to uh, better understand what is happening. So when I faced this problem, I thought how to sort it out. The solution seemed to be quite obvious uh, to everybody. What do we always do when something is wrong? We look at the login to see what's happened. And in our logs, for code D, we have uh, a very good, a very useful message, target config, which means that we has updated the config and is ready to send a signal. However, we'll need a small race to rerun it, but it's a very fast operation which only needs one second. Uh, to restart uh, in Jinx, in Jinx uh, so when we get it in the log, we can consider that it's okay. You may have noticed that we come across it several times, and the conf d contain uh, was started before the test and will be there all throughout the testing period. Now let us write the code that we need. Uh, the most convenient way in this case is to use the manager context. Even though we don't have it yet, but we'll write it now. Wait for config update. It will be accepting Docker client 
and uh, the whole of this code is then put into the context manager and it will work as follows it will get connected to the Docker container, get the login from it, uh, then remember the login, then we'll do yield, then we'll start run, and after, after the yield block, it will be waiting, and after it is all over, it will lose uh, control and will keep working. And for the mo for the time being, we'll um, uh, write here assert false, and we'll look how we can introspect it uh, uh, our environment using the Docker client. So here we are on RCT. Uh, here's our uh, Docker client. Uh, containers, the object that makes it possible to uh, work with containers, and here we have uh, the other things necessary to get all of our containers. And now we can write a code to display the names of all of our containers. Well, the one that we need is container conf d. Uh, here is the balance. Uh, conf d is the name of our service and one stands for the fact that it is uh, run number one. Since we start from zero, we can always be sure that it will always be equal to zero. That's why here we can uh, say that if the name is equal to this value, then this container will be our uh, balancer container that we need so much. Now that we have this container, we can interact with it. We have already used uh, kill and remove, but there is also another method such as logs. To get all of our logs back, uh, we need to apply decode and uh, for the line we may do split based on the line um, transfer code. Now we have 43 logs. So basically this is uh, sufficient for the moment. Uh, before we uh, started our container, we had to remember how many logs it had. Now we let uh, running go, so the code inside the context will be working. Uh, uh, etcd will be running, and now we'll wait for a certain cycle to check if any logs appear there. But we wait for a limited period of time. Because uh, if it is an endless cycle, then we'll have uh, the computer freezing. That's why we need a certain reasonable in interval, which can be quite long. However, it should be finite. To my, my, from my experience, I can say that 10 seconds is always enough. If it works, then it will uh, work much faster if it doesn't work, then uh, a longer time will not help. So what are we to do now? We need now to, and here we have index, we need to increase uh, the index by one, and for one second we can afford waiting for it. Uh, so basically how do we check if anything is there? We need to look at We need to make sure that for each log line this is simpler 
that was generated well, first of all, we found out how many logs we had. Now we should this look uh, what uh, was generated later. If now we look at what needs to be written there, we need to have this line there. If this line was found in a log entry, then we can finalize our waiting and uh, enable the blocking, disable the blocking. But as a matter of fact, we'd better wait here for one more second, because if this line is found in the log, means that Confind was uh, re record, rewritten, but however it only works every second time, every other time. However, it will quite greatly accelerate the test, because normally just two seconds before the end the cycle is completed. If it's a slow session of three or four seconds, it may have something else. And in real life, uh, we'll have, by an order, high number of tests. And now let's uh, do uh, start. Or maybe I have made a mistake somewhere. We'll just see now whether it works OK or not. So we have started our environment. Uh, wait for is waiting for the port to wake up. And uh, here our tests are starting. Yes. They have been passed and everything is working OK. So basically, this is all I wanted to show you today. There was a link there to GitHub. Uh, you may find more sophisticated uh, case studies there, what happens with the load balancing. It, it also checks, uh, verifies the caching. Those of you who are interested may have a look at it. That's enough for today. My presentation is over, and I'm ready to try and answer your questions now. Thank you for your attention. Well, please use your microphone. Wait for the microphone to reach you to ask your question. Good morning. Thank you for your presentation. My question is as follows. What happens if the docker sends the log somewhere else? If everything, for instance, is centralized, then Accordingly, we cannot get uh, other approaches. How can we make sure that everything is OK? Well, first of all, you need to understand that from CI stage and CI production are different things. In production, logs are written somewhere else, but with CI, the logs are written in a standard way. And speaking about more universal mechanism, it is health checks. Then in production, nobody will be looking them up. But for testing, where we are to make sure about the workability of the environment, it is quite normal. And you will have access there. In production, it is only health checks, and nothing else can be invented. Hello, my name is uh, Kirill. Uh, thank you for your presentation. In addition to the fact that my vision is absolutely different, why do you call them infrastructure testing? Because 
they check the state of the whole, the status of the whole infrastructure. Just that when we call a test an infrastructure test, I thought that they would be recording changes in the infrastructure. But we have uh, started a new container. But it's uh, just the same as a service. Well, I understood your question. However, it's a matter of terminology because, unfortunately, our IT, our IT environment is not standardized, and quite often uh, a term is used which may be understood in an absolutely uh, different way. So it looks like our terminology needs to be aligned. So if you said that you have uh, a reverse vision, but when it comes to time slips, and Docker clients and hard uh, code, I, I don't know. We have had uh, somewhat similar tests, but they were quite flack. I don't know the exact word in Russian here. That is to say, they kept failing every third or fourth uh, time. But that's a separate matter. So, I am really not quite sure uh, to what extent uh, they fail after every three times. Well, and I would also like to emphasize that you cannot do uh, kill at once. Thank you very much. I think we, will, we can uh, speak about it in more detail later. If there are no more questions, then let's uh, finish.